This is a short introduction to important factors involved in writing a safety case. A safety case presents a significant commitment for an operator who must present an understanding of the risks presented by his operations and demonstrate that these risks are being appropriately controlled. The approaches adopted to demonstrate safety vary between industries and regions of the world. However, we can identify factors of successful safety cases from any industry or region. This presentation describes those factors. The first attribute of a good safety case is that it must be clear. Whilst it may be argued that much of the benefit of a safety case approach comes from the process of developing it, it is also fundamentally important that the safety case can act as a communication tool to the workforce, operators, regulators and other stakeholders, including on occasion the general public. This is greatly assisted if the safety case is written in concise and accessible language and the use of diagrams, flowcharts and tables is usually beneficial. The safety case should seek to provide a comprehensive picture as a standalone document but not swamp the reader with irrelevant or unimportant information. A structured, clear and logical approach is vital in this regard and the safety case outputs such as limits and conditions or maintenance requirements should be clearly identifiable, accessible and in a form which assists implementation of these on the plant. By adopting a proportionate approach, the author can ensure that attention is focused on the key issues of the safety case and that these are not uh, swamped by trivial issues or unnecessary text. An often overlooked benefit from ensuring that the safety case is clear and accessible is seen only when changes need to be made to the document. As a living document, change is inevitable. However, if a clear and logical approach has been adopted in the production of the document, the impact of changes on the safety case should be readily determined and the update of the document simplified. The safety case should be demonstrably complete with all reasonably foreseeable threats to safety identified. The case should demonstrate, in a systematic fashion, that the plant incorporates sufficient protection against these faults and that the safety criteria, including risk targets, are met as appropriate. There should not be gaps in the assessments or incomplete aspects of the document. An incomplete safety case may give a full sense of security. The author should ensure that the safety case covers all plant, operations and processes within the scope of the safety case, including startup and shutdown where applicable. The safety case should be reasonable and sensible. Coherent justification should be presented for the claims, arguments and evidence within the document and these should be auditable. It stands to reason that the document should be free from calculational or typographical errors. This is achieved through an appropriate checking and document review process. A badly presented document undermines confidence in the overall document. It is also important that the document accurately reflects the plant in terms of equipment, processes and procedures. This may be the as-is state of the plant for an existing plant, including any recent modifications where necessary, or the current design intent for the plant. It is important that the author of the safety case is familiar with the latest position, either through interaction with the designers or through visiting the plant. One way in which the accuracy of the case is ensured is through review, revision and update of the safety case to ensure that it remains current. As the plant passes through its life cycle, the safety case should be managed to ensure that it remains valid at any point in time. The content of a safety case may also change if the plant undergoes a significant modification or a series of minor modifications which have a significant cumulative effect. A safety case is therefore a living suite of documents which should reflect the current state of the facility in all the physical, operational and managerial aspects. Periodic reviews are often used as an opportunity to review the safety case. 
The arguments developed in the safety case should be supported with factual evidence. In other words, these should be documented and measurable. Claims relating to the integrity or performance of engineering features should be supported through a verification or substantiation process. The links between engineering and safety provisions, including operational processes, should be clear and auditable. The methods used to substantiate safety together with computer code assessments should be shown to be fit for purpose with adequate verification and validation provided. These may include computer models and the analysis techniques used. If there is a limit on the validity of an approach, evidence is required to show that the approach is used within the valid region. Any assumptions that have been made should be identified and shown to be appropriate. The safety case should identify where it depends on other external facilities and services, for example electrical supplies, and specify and substantiate clearly any associated assumptions that are being made. The interfaces and boundaries with other safety cases should be highlighted and appropriate arrangements identified. It's useful if all interfacing safety cases are written in a consistent manner to aid in their integration. The safety case should demonstrate that the plant will remain safe throughout a defined lifetime. Where a forward action plan is presented, this should have unambiguous actions and a defined timescale for their completion. Now we have a complete picture of the key aspects for a successful safety case. Further information can be found in the HSE Safety Cases module.